Wigner had some for forbearance made. Okay. Uh, I talk a little about the random matrix theory. Uh, usually, in the random matrix theory, we consider the sequence of uh, matrices whose elements are random variables and uh, whose uh, dimension tends to infinity. We will call this, this sequence the ensemble of matrices. Uh, uh, the problem which appear in this uh, field uh, first connected with uh, the distribution of uh, uh, eigenvalues of random matrices. Uh, Thus, denote by lambda 1 dot lambda m the eigenvalues of random matrices, m n. This is some sequence. And define the normalized counting measure, as you can see in this formula. That is, we take our arbitrary interval delta. We take the number of uh, eigenvalues that lies in delta and divide it by n. Nothing very hard. Um, the global regime of the random matrix theory centered around the behavior of this measure is uh, well studied for many ensembles of the random matrices. It is shown that for many ensembles uh, we obtain, we have that uh, measure, normalized counting measure NN tends weakly to some non-random measure N. Of course, this measure is normalized to unity and uh, is absolutely continuous for many cases. Uh, its density row we call the density of states of ensemble, and we also call the spectrum of the ensemble the support of this measure n. Uh, the local regime of the random matrix theory uh, deals with the behavior of the eigenvalues uh, on the interval which were. Yes, yes. For the Wigner distribution, we obtain, of course, the semicircle law. I talked yeah, about this. Uh, I will tell about this. Um, so the local regime deals with the eigenvalues on the interval whose length uh, uh, is of order the mean distance between the eigenvalues. So if we, you can see that if uh, on some interval n of delta is bigger than zero, then on this interval we obtain uh, uh, oh, the number of eigenvalues is of order n. So if we want to consider the finite number of, of eigenvalues, we should take the interval whose length tends to zero as n tends to zero. Um, uh, according to the universality conjecture, usually it's called the wigner dyson conjecture, the behavior of uh, the eigenvalue on such interval does not depend on the probability law of ensemble and de may depend only of the type of ensemble. That is, we take Hermitian matrices or sy symmetrical matrices or unitary and so on, symplectic sometimes, and so on. Uh, usually we consider two cases of universality. Uh, the first case is the universality in the bulk of the spectrum. This is uh, near the uh, points where rho is uh, not equal to zero, that's bigger than zero, in the neighborhood of such points where rho is something like this. And the second case is at the edge of the spectrum. Here, rho is equal to zero, but it behaves like It behave like a, behaves like a square root uh, with some coefficient when x tend to, tends to lambda zero. This is lambda zero too. Uh, in the random matrix theory, when we speak about the universality, usually we mean that uh, the universality of the correlation function. This is the main object of the local regime of the random matrix theory. Uh, what is it? We take the joint eigenvalue probability density and integrate each over the last n minus k parameters. Then we obtain the function that we call the k point correlation function. Then the universality conjecture usually, 
is something like this. We take the, this function in the neighborhood of uh, some points lambda zero. If we take the points in the bulk of the spectrum, we have such normalization as u1. In, if we take the points on the edge of the spectrum, we take such normalization as u2. And then we prove that uh, in some sense, uh, this uh, normalized correlation function tends to determinant of uh, the sign kernel. This is, maybe I should write, this is uh, This is the sign kernel, and if we speak about the edge of the spectrum, we obtain the determinant of the area kernel, which can be defined here. Area AI is the area fi function. We consider the different interesting case of universality and different object. We consider the characteristic uh, uh, correlation function of the characteristic polynomials. Uh, it's defined by the following formula. And uh, thus we take the uh, even product of the determinant and take the average of this product. Again, we are interested in the local behavior of this function when uh, lambda is near some point in the bulk of the spectrum or near some point of the edge of the spectrum. This corresponds to such lambda. Here you can see. Again, gamma is a constant such that uh, rho behave like uh, this coefficient divided by p uh, multiplied by the square root. Uh, again, here the parameters psi j why in uh, any finite interval of real axis? Um, yeah. When you say something is zero, something has a negative sign, and you mean the diagonal element of the real element? Uh, no, this is not the, the diagonal element. This is parameter of lambda one, lambda two is a real parameter. It's not a matrix. We, uh, we take the determinant of constant lambda j times i minus m. And lambda j is a real number. It's not a matrix. Is So lambda j is not a matrix. This one. And this one or what? This one. Are real and so complex parameters that may depend on n? What what are real and complex? The the lambda i lambda. Lambda j can be real complex, yes. Here, we, lambda j is real, of course. Here, lambda j, of course, is real because we take a real parameter x and lambda zero is also real. That's why I understand. Uh, this is a set of edges of the spectrum. Sigma is the bulk of the spectrum, and sigma prime is the set of the edges of the spectrum. And they could be more than two of those, or not? Um, why not? Of course, it can be. If uh, we, the spectrum is uh, not one interval, then of course it can be not a problem. <laughs> but in my case, it's only two. <laughs> so you're basically going to compute that, excuse me, let's go back to two. So basically you're going to compute the product of those determinants when the lambda i's are all very close to being yes. lambda zero, which is in the, in the middle of the Yes, and we're really interested in the symptotic behavior of this function for such lambda, if not. And you want to see some reflections of universality. Yes, of course. <laughs> so I take about the universality. 
uh, if we take the uh, most maybe simpler case of the random matrices, the Gaussian unitary ensemble, this is the matrices and uh, Wn is n times m matrices with uh, uh, maybe I should write uh, this is m n. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, and uh, the elements of Wn is Gaussian random variables with the dispersion one on the diagonal and uh, dispersion uh, a half uh, out of the diagonal. But uh, we take the real and imaginary part. This is the Hermitian matrix. It's not symmetry. In this case, the uh, behavior of this function is well known. You can see the symmetric behavior in this formula. Here, lambda 0 lies in minus 2, 2, because minus 2, 2 is a, a spectrum for the, these matrices. So this is the bulk of the spectrum. And delta of xi is a van der Mond determinant of xi. Yes, yes, the xi is like this, yes. Yes, this is a small deviation. No, no, xi is finite. So the smallest yes, because we divide it by n. By yes, n. yes, yes. Uh, you can see this is, of course, in the bulk of the spectrum, but the same formula with the A kernel, but not with sine kernel, we can write for the uh, edge of the spectrum for lambda null is equal to minus 2, 2, minus 2, or 2. Uh, you can see that here we can have the sine kernel, but if uh, for the uh, correlation function we have the determinant of all pairs indices, so we take E i and j f all from 1 to k, that in this case we take the set of 1 to 2k divided by two part from 1 to k and from k plus 1 to 2k to and take only the indices from different sets and form the determinant in such way. So this is not the same determinant as we see in uh, the universality of the correlation function. Maybe it is difficult to see it at once, but this function is symmetric on C. And so you can divide uh, the set of 1 to 2k for any two equal parts and form the such determinant and divide by the uh, van der Mond of these sets. And then you obtain the same answer. So of course, it must be symmetrical because the function f is symmetrical of xi. <laughs> well, it, doesn't, well, it doesn't matter how you... Uh, you can divide this set for any two sets of k elements. Okay, I mean that's what I meant. Yes, yes. This function is symmetrical. It's difficult to see it, but this is symmetrical function. <laughs> Similar. Oh, you have two k of them, right? So you have two. K, so you have part of of two k matrices here. Do I, do I have the part of two? So how, how many palm, How many determinants? Uh, it's two? only one determinant. Yeah, we, sorry, yes, yeah. we have the pair indices from. We, we take one indices from this set and one indices from this set, and take the determinant k times k. Yes, yes. Uh, no, no, if you take k tends to infinity, it's a different case. We take, we fix k and tends n to infinity only. Why? It is. It is, it is, of course. But we divide by some uh, factors. It's uh, F to K is uh, this product of. So it's the same thing what you said. Yes, yes. 
similar result for the Hermitian matrix model. This is um, the this first. This is done by orthogonal polynomials, or how is this done? Yes, yes. This was done by the orthogonal polynomials, and for Hermitian matrix model, we took done by the orthogonal polynomials by uh, Brizan, Hikami, Fedorov, and Stachov. Brizan, Hikami has a little physical approach in the serial point, and Fedorov, Stachov do it in its strong way. Uh, Hermitian matrix model is uh, the, this is the probability distribution for the Gaussian unitary ensemble. And if we take uh, instead of mn square v of mn, and uh, where v is some function that uh, decrease well enough, we obtain the Hermitian matrix model. So it's a little generalization of the Gaussian unitary ensemble. And we consider other generalization of this ensemble is a Hermitian Wigner matrices with symmetrical distribution. Again, we take matrices the sa in same form, as like in the zero here, but now elements not necessarily Gaussian. We take any low. We only assume that the odd moments is zero. And the, again, the dispersion on the diagonal element is one, and of the real and imaginary part of out of diagonal is uh, a half. The density of states in this case well known. It's given by the famous Wigner Smisoko law. You can see this the density. Now, uh, the problem was considered before me. Gertz and Kostras consider the case of two determinant, k equal to one in my formulas, and they obtain such asymptotic. This is asymptotic for the bulk of the spectrum, and this is asymptotic for the edge of the spectrum. Uh, note that gamma here is equal to one, so it's not very important, because, of course, if we take the density of And uh, lambda tends to two. We obtain here the coefficient two, and so gamma is one. Uh, kappa four here is the so-called uh, force cumulant of the matrices, or it's the force moment uh, minus three force. Uh, for Gaussian unitary ensemble, this coefficient is zero. So we obtain such asymptotic. Again, we obtain sine kernel in the case of the bulk and the airy kernel in the case of the edge of the spectrum. The main problem in, the main question maybe in this problem is how to obtain the convenient integral representation for f to k. Uh, we discussed that uh, for the case of Hermitian matrix model, it uh, uh, further of Strachov uh, did it by taking the method of orthogonal polynomials. And Gertz and Koster use the method of uh, mm, exponential generating function. But this method uh, did not allow them to obtain the integral representation for car bigger than one. We use here the method of Grassmann integration. And we speak about this method. But first, maybe the result. Uh, not this. Defined by dB of xi and dE of xi, uh, the, this uh, asymptotic when we take c1 equal to xi2, this one and this one. Then let us define by uh, phi tilde of 2kb and phi f tilde 2ke such function, and uh, we take the F2K and do some normalization. This is normalization as in the Gaussian unitary. In this case, we also divide by n rho in the k square power. And here, we also divide by the dB, product of dB in minus half power, and here by the product of dE. This is to obtain the finite uh, answer. Then when we take the limit, we, we have such two theorems that this limit in the bulk of the spectrum equal to this 
one determinate with the coefficient, and in the edge of the spectrum, we obtain the other result. This is the determinant of i kernel, and again, we take the coefficient. Thus, you can see that uh, only fourth determinant gives a contribution in the above limit, that the higher moment do not contribute. So only the, only the fourth yes, the yes, yes. Yes, and this is a manifestation of universality which can be compared with the universality of the correlation function. But there we take uh, only two, two moments it's in true, the. It's not surprising that it only depends upon k4, but with more, it is a little surprising that it only depends upon. Yes, four. yes, of course. So for big k, it's a manifestation of universality, of course, because. So is this k4 is just a constant? Yes, yes, it's a uh, fourth moment minus, uh, yes, yes, fourth moment minus three fourths. So, so you have some C factor up there, which is, of course, growing. Uh, when we cut tends to. Oh, yeah, uh, when we cut, <laughs> K is six, right? So yes, yes. So K is six, it's not growing at all, so that's six. That's just for some, that's just Yes, some this number. is a finite that's limit. Just some numbers, right? And yes, yes. Just some number times this, what you would get if it, it were U, is that true or not? Yes, yes. So to do this for the rule E, we should take uh, kappa 4 equal to 0. And so this is the uh, answer. Fourth moment, right? It's just uh, that fourth moment. It's, you know, it's a cumulus. It's a cumulus, yes. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the cumulus vanishes. And yes. Then, and then you, would, then you would recover the, 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 the GUE answer, right? Yes, yes. So this limit. Uh, coincide with the limit for the GUE up to the factor which depends on the fourth cumulant. Uh, the second uh, ensemble that we consider is uh, another very important ensemble, is the uh, sample covariance matrices with symmetrical distribution. It can be defined by the formula three. Here, RMN is a rectangular matrix now. It's M times M complex matrices with independent and identically distributed entries, real and imaginary part of the entries. Again, we take the odd moment equal to zero. We assume that odd moment equal to zero and the dispersion of uh, absolute value square is one. In this case, we assume also that M belong to a sequence such that and the ratio of the dimension of this rectangular matrices tends to some constant C, which bigger than one. It's not very important that bigger than one. We can take C smaller than one, but then we obtain the delta function in zero when we speak about the density of states, and it's not very good. So we take uh, um, C bigger than one, and we assume that dimension of our matrices, of our sequence of matrices, tends to this C. Again, the case of uh, K, uh, maybe I should say that the uh, density of states in this case also well known and given by the Martin Capaster law. You can see it in this formula. Here, la lambda plus minus is uh, one plus minus square root of C in the square. Again, case k equal one, considered by costers. Again, by the generating exponential generative function. Again, we define uh, this db de f tilde b f tilde e in the same case x there. And note that here we have gamma not equal to one. We have uh, um, different gamma for case uh, lambda plus and lambda minus, uh, and we can compute it by this formula. Then we have the result. Again, we, we can see that the asymptotic is in the bulk is a sine kernel with some coefficient which depends only of fourth cumulant of uh, the probability law. And uh, if we take, uh, maybe here, ah, yes. Uh, and if we take uh, the asymptotic behavior in the bulk, then we obtain the area kernel with the coefficients which depend over the parameter C and over the force cumulant of the probability rules. And so again, we take the universality. In this case, we 
also, when we speak about the edge of the spectrum, we also should assume that the ratio of the uh, dimensions of the rectangular matrices tends to see sufficiently fast. You can see that if we divide mn by n, we obtain that uh, so it's must uh, tends to see faster than n is minus two third. And then we obtain such a synchrotic behavior. Now speak ab about the method. <coughs> we to obtain the int convenient integral representation for F2K, we use the Grassmann variables. Uh, what is it? Uh, we consider two sets of variables, Pcj of one to n and Pcj bar of one to n, which satisfy the following anti-commuting condition. It's anti-commute with each other in one set and between the different set, of course. Uh, of course, we can take these, uh, mm, uh, these variables and uh, generate the algebra. We obtain the Grassmann algebra major A, uh, and elements of this algebra is uh, some polynomials of psi j and psi j bar because uh, the square of each variable is zero, so we obtain the only polynomials with the first each variable in the first power. Following the reason, we define the operat operation of integration in this uh, algebra by some formal way. We take that the integral of constant is zero, and the integral of the variables over each these variables is one. By the linearity, we can extend it to the whole algebra, and then we obtain that if we take if we take this is some variables of uh, psi j and psi j bar if we take the function f of Write one more coefficient. If we take such polynomial, then the integral of So this the integral, uh, I maybe should say that uh, uh, we define only the one integral, but the multiple integral is defined to be a repeated one, and uh, we assume that the differential anti-compute with each other and with uh, also psi, yo, psi j and psi j bar. Then we obtain that the integral of such function is this coefficient. This is the top one. Yes. We take only the top one coefficient. And, uh, the following Gaussian integral is well known. If we take the such exponent and integrate it over real imaginary part, we obtain one divided by the determinant. Of course, we here should assume that A is positive Hermitian matrices because we know that we need the convergence on each integral. So here A is positive matrices. One of the important formula of the Grassmann variables, maybe <laughs> the main formula, is that if we take the integration over the uh, such integral over the psi j and uh, psi j bar, we obtain the, not the one divided by the determinant, we obtain determinant. Uh, here we can take any r because uh, there are no problem with convergence. It's th this exponent only the polynomial, so no problem. And 
we should use we will use this formula below. Uh, besides, we have that if we uh, put the some product uh, of the pairs of the synthesis uh, before the exponent, we obtain the determinant of the minor of the matrices R. It's evident because we take the derivative of this integral or the um, elements A. Now, let us consider the how this method work for the very simple case. We take the function f to k, uh, f2, for We take this function for two determinant and for the most simple case, the Gaussian unitary ensemble, not for the Wigner, but for the Gaussian unitary. And now we take lambda one equal to lambda two and without size. Then we should compute this integral. Of course, we use uh, this representation for the determinant and we write. Yeah, we take uh, uh, four n uh, Grassmann variables, uh, two n for this determinant and two n for this determinant. Thus, we obtain using this formula. We should write the same integral for indices two. and we integrate it over and take the expectation over the Gaussian measure of so, this. So let me see. Uh, so what, so you, you want to use different size for the, for the different determinants, right? Because, uh, so I, I mean. Why different size? What, what are the indices that you're using on, on that? Do you have, so what are the uh, First indices is the indices for the first oh, determinant, okay. and this one is for this determinant. Yeah, I can't quite read that, so that's five. Uh, this is. Uh, this is J1 and K1, and this is J2 and K2. Okay. So, so, so those are independent Grassmann variables. Yes, yes. Then we, uh, we know that uh, Mn is a matrices whose uh, uh, element, real element, imaginary part independent Gaussian variable, so we should collect the uh, coefficients under these variables. We write. Now I want to uh, take the expectation of this function. But first, I should prepare it. Uh, the cof this uh, with lambda do not depend on the mn, so I can take it off expectation, and then I write the coefficient under the uh, elements of these matrices. We divide it by square n because matrices mn is a, and this is the Gaussian matrices, and we divide over square root of n. Yes, yes. And this is to obtain, the, because here we obtain this one. This is 
coefficient of the matrix is m when we take k equal to j or to j and uh, we take j is smaller than k because of independence we know that this matrix is this Hermitian yeah, this is a diagonal pieces and this is under the diagonal variety. And here we obtain CJ1, CK1 plus uh, CJ2, CK2. This is from these two determinants and uh, under the diagonal. And uh, this element we also for K smaller than j we should see. Thus we obtain here uh, thus we obtain such coefficients. This is uh, under the from the under the diagonal element and this is uh, for the another part. And for the imaginary part, we obtain, uh, yes, very similar, but uh, we obtain this one minus this one since the Hermitian. Thus, we obtain uh, the same coefficient, but these two should be min minuses. Maybe I'll write it <laughs> this way. Um. Now we. I guess, I guess the real point that you might want to make is that, is that once you've written it, it's a these Raskin variables. The, ra the, the matrices M N are Gaussian, and you can just do that integral directly. Yes, of course. And now. <laughs> Yes, we were we write the Gaussian measure. This is with some coefficients. I don't want to write it. Uh, the measure uh, here might be half, and here we obtain This is a probability measure. We can write it, and now we can easily integrate over the, uh, over uh, yes, over the randomness and obtain the expectation. Of course, thus we have uh, the integral. Here we, the first exponent without any changes because there are only lambdas here. And uh, what we obtain here, uh, we should obtain uh, uh, this one square of this one because we have uh, uh, half of the square because we have the half here. Uh, uh, the sum of such squares, and, and this, this is we integrate over these variables. And now we integrate over these variables, we obtain the uh, square of this one minus, because we have i here, the square of this one. Uh, of course, if we, this is the sum of two additional, and this is the, uh, we have here minus. Thus, if we take the, difference of square of this, and we obtain the product, the uh, full product of this one times this one. Uh, and we have, uh, since we have the here coefficient one, and we obtain uh, one, a, a fourth because we 
because the Gaussian integration. Thus, we obtain J1 CK1 plus CJ2 CK2 times CJ CK1 CJ1 plus CJ2 or CK2 CJ2. There. The psi, where the psi is uh, this one, we integrate over all psi's. Thus, we obtain this one. Maybe now I should go to that whiteboard. We take. Uh, Could you just write down the answer now? I mean, just uh, because I'm interested in. Uh, maybe I. I Yes, maybe I should say only one thing that then we um, now write this in the more convenient way. This is the first exponent with lambdas. And here we obtain if we um, take uh, the square and this product, we obtain And uh, minus uh, uh. thus we obtain uh, this this sum square with uh, one one coffee. Coefficient. This is square with two two coefficients, and then is the products of one two to one coefficient. Then we can uh, uh, use uh, so-called Haber-Stefanovich transformation. That we again use the Gaussian integration, but we use it the following way: we take the additional Gaussian variable and write that. Uh, maybe I can write this here. Write that uh, we use this one and uh, use. Uh, And this one. Then we can write, maybe I can take this away. We can write this, this exponent is equal to, and uh, here are some coefficients, n square to c square. And we obtain exponent maybe I write this is a lambda psi one plus lambda. Psi two plus uh, a times e a times this one plus a b and plus uh, i 
you uh, Now we can easily integrate it over psi using the same formula. Which this is a quadratic form, quadratic form of psi. We can integrate over psi, and then we obtain the answer. And it is convenient to take the matrix Ku. This is a Hermitian matrices, and we obtain here. Two yes, this is two by two matrices, Hermitian two by two matrices, and we obtain here this uh, because uh, this is uh, exponent factorized over J, and we obtain the nth power because for any J's of. Uh, was matrices so that, that's, a, that's the beauty of this formula you, you, get, a, you get a formula like this right? yes and uh, you have uh, of course uh, matrices n times n and here you obtain the integral of uh, the matrices two by two only and of course it's very interesting formula. Now you can see that here we, for example, can diagonalize Q because this is unitary invariant and this is unitary invariant too. And thus we can take only two variables and we obtain here This is a Jacobian of the diagonalization change. So we obtain very sim similar, uh, very simple formula with only two variables, and these variables factorize. It is no, only this term is not factorized. Yeah, exactly yes, yes. So uh, of course it is very easy to compute the asymptotic by the saddle point methods. It's no problem here. And we obtain the answer that uh, I showed first. It's uh, I do it for two determinants, but for uh, two k determinants, it's not very. But we obtain not uh, two by two matrices, but k by k matrices. What is different for the Wigner case? Maybe I have not much time, <laughs> but I try to explain. Uh, the, this one is the same, of course, because we, these matrices have the same structure, the same Hermitian structure, and of course we have, have the same, this all the same. I denote the, these coefficients over uh, w, wjj and wjk as uh, uh, key of jk plus and minus, and we, of course, in the Wigner case, we don't have such a convenient measure. That <laughs> we should integrate over the probability in some other way, but it's not very hard here because uh, we can take the second exponent and expand in t into the series. You just use a cumulative sample, basically, right? Yes, yes, this is a of course, and so we obtain the fourth <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, since uh, if we take the large power of uh, this uh, coefficients of psi jk plus and minus, the power bigger than four, we obtain zero because the anti-commuting relation. Thus, we obtain only uh, odd moments is zero. Thus, we obtain only such coefficient. And then we can uh, take it into the exponent. 
And? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, mu4 is a false moment, not Camulant. Oh, mu4 is a false moment. Mu4 is false moment, and kappa4 is a false. Yes. Yes, kappa4 kappa is a mu4 minus 3 fourths. Uh, yes, there are some uh, kappa four is uh, kappa four is mu four minus three fourths. So we have mu four in the both sides. What is the problem? So higher, what about higher order cumulus? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's correct. Uh, this is only for two determinant I write. Ah, okay. There is no, <laughs> no, no higher cumulant. I, I, because, yes, because if I, uh, if we take, uh, if we take 2K determinant, then of course we have uh, uh, six have cumulant order. and eight cumulant, but here, no. Yes. Yes. So for two, you just reduce to the case of mu four is equal to zero. Yeah. Not mu so four. Kappa no, kappa no, four. No, kappa no, four, no, four no, is equal to zero. No, for GUE, no, kappa four is equal to zero. But not mu mm -hmm. four because mu four is a, a fourth, fourth moment. Fourth moment. So that's that's not zero. Okay. But so kappa four is, is zero, right? Yes. Thus, we obtain th that F2 is equal to this formula. Here, uh, the first is like this one with lambdas. This one, lambda, th at this is the first addition. Sigma 1 is like in the uh, Gaussian case. We take, uh, again, we take the square of 1, 1, uh, square of 2, 2, and product of the 1, 2, 2, 2, 1. So the sigma one is the same as in, like in the Gaussian. And here we obtain additional sigma two with the coefficient k4, kappa four. Um, maybe some the formula is the same. Here we again obtain the square. We again ta can take the hubbard satanovich transformation and uh, took the square root of this. Then we obtain, we integrate over the Grassmann variables using formulas, uh, this one, because we obtain not the quadratic form, we, because kappa for sigma two, we obtain the fourth product of it, but we use the second formula, and then we obtain formula, this one, and you can see that uh, it's a, uh, very similar to this one formula. It's very similar, only we have the coefficient uh, with. Are you describing now the, sorry, are you just, you're still, oh no, you're still on the, you're still on the two. Yes, yes, so I still on the two. And here we obtain the such formula. Uh, then roughly speaking, we can, we have uh, one plus something divided by n in the n power. Roughly speaking, we take, that this is exponent of this coefficient, then we integrate, can integrate over p, of course, because we obtain the Gaussian integral again, and then we obtain asymptotic, this is not a, uh, this is not a formula, this is only asymptotic, but of course we can obtain the same formula. Here we obtain uh, mu n of Q is a Gaussian measure, uh, no, not Gaussian, but uh, this measure that we obtain in Gaussian way. And uh, we obtain the exponent with xi because here I take uh, xi one equal to xi two, and, but here not. So we obtain this exponent and we obtain the coefficient with kappa chitty, kappa four, and uh, some function which is small f one 
f n one is small function of uh, it's bounded by uh, uh, maybe a logarithm n by n something like this and it's analytical function so no problem then we integrate again diagonalize maybe I don't speak you're about this now yes yes maybe now so I don't do yes maybe I don't speak about it and I try to explain what is for arbitrary car here we obtain the same formula but with uh, uh, other cumulants of course and uh, but you can see sigma one is like in this case sigma two is like in gaussian uh, is like a case for two determinant and we also obtain the such product this is not very good product, of course, but again, we can use the uh, hubbard satanoich transformation, and you can see that here we have, uh, this is a fixed parameter, this is a K, not M, <laughs> sorry, but you can, this is a fixed parameters, and uh, if we take the sum, you can, this, the order of the sum is roughly speaking N square. And here in the exponent, we divide it by n, uh, by n in the p power. For two determinants, if p equal two, we, we obtain the, uh, maybe, we see that uh, sigma p is uh, like n square, of order n square, roughly speaking, and for p equal two, we obtain the contribution, and if we take uh, p bigger than two, then we obtain additional one div divided by n, and this why is. Why am I sticking one upon n? I guess it should be obvious, but I can't. Um, you're saying the higher order, the higher order signal should suppress the higher order uh, it's not uh, easy to show it. Uh, of course, it's a big uh, work with this, but I try to explain the idea why the uh, high decomponent do not give contribution. Oh, yes, they yes. Don't they don't contribute because they have the additional one uh, divided by n. The six component have n cube in here, and here we take only two sum of n. Then thus we obtain the additional power of n in the denominator. And this is the main, uh, uh, maybe, this is why this uh, cumulant of higher moment do not contribute to the above limit. Maybe I stop here because <laughs> if I try to explain more, <laughs> it's <laughs> not very difficult. <laughs>